hate repeat offenders. I, Scott, you've been in these videos for this very same thing. You knocked that off. Here it is, Steve's Dang It's. What's better than this? Hello, my friends, it's Thursday, the best day of the week. It's time for another edition of Steve's Dang It's, where we take a look at the biggest dang it's from around the NHL. Spoiler alert, the last one has to do with guys who dress like this, the refs. But we have a lot to get to before we get to that. Like for example, everything that happened in that game between the Kings and the Kraken. Nine to eight in overtime was the final score. Anytime you get 17 goals in a single game, some things are going to go awry. Like for example, if you're Cal Peterson and you're in the Kings net, your stick is gonna get caught in your own teammate's jersey. Pivots against Deneau, passes to the point. Morgan rotates the puck around the boards. Wenberg holding behind the net. Wenberg still with it. Burakovsky right side shoots and scores. Burakovsky looked like he went short side high. You know this is the area of the game they have control. That's down low cycles, but where the shot comes from, it's just at the dot. It is short side. Poor Cal Peterson. That's not even his fault, but still a dang it. Or how about this? I've never seen this before in my entire life. At the end of regulation. The horn went off early! It's the deck, and Dowdy has it. He looks around, it was Oleksiak, the big boy who took Arvidsson down. Trevor Moore beats out an icing, and the horn sounds here with 10 seconds. Because the clock was running, inadvertently it had been stopped when Jones came out to handle, so regulation time is over. Remember, the timekeepers at the bench keep time in addition to what you see on the scoreboard, just in case the scoreboard fails. And again, Alex, there was no stoppage since then. Time where the clock stopped. And this is with our scoreboard, our scoreboard in here, so you can follow along. And this is with the, the, the scrum right in front of the King's bench, as you pointed out, Jim. Yeah, and everyone thought, okay, you know, that's... That's gonna, everyone leave it, so now they stopped it, right? But they haven't blown it down yet. So you see the clock, not moving. <laughs> we go back again, and Marty Jones is handling the puck behind the net. I've never seen a goal horn go off so many times in a single game that it malfunctioned. Apparently the clock stopped when there wasn't a whistle or something. Dude, the NHL has one job in Seattle right now. One job. Get fans to love this sport. Make them feel entertained, make them feel appreciated, and make them feel like they know what's happening! I know this game was in LA, but what Kraken fan was watching at home like, what? Oh yeah, okay, I understand. Always amazed when I've seen something that I've never seen before. That's a dang it. Not even done. LA gets called for too many men on the ice in overtime. Dursey, fresh legs, Trevor Moore. Is this too many? Oh, it is, the Kings oh, botched the change and it's too many men sending Seattle to a power play in overtime. We saw this recently where it was not called against the opposition. It was more blatant than this one. The changing player must be within five feet of the bench. You stop for me here guys if you can. There's Kempe. The player is on the ice, joining the attack. By the rule, Kempe is not within five feet of the bench. How do you get called for too many men in three-on-three -three overtime where the whole hook of the format is the lack of men on the ice? Huge dang it. And to top it all off, they allow the power play goal to end the game. Seattle looking for a lane. Everly goal line, Burakovsky scores! And on the 17th, Puck that hits the back of the net. Seattle wins it in overtime. By the way, I feel like I should mention Cal Peterson did not allow all nine goals because he only played half the game. He allowed four goals. Still pretty bad. But it's not nine. It's also not good enough for the LA Kings because then Peterson, who is at the beginning of a three-year contract paying him $5 million per year, got waived yesterday. It's $4 million this year, five the next, and six the next. There's signing bonuses involved. That The first game that he played on that contract was last month. 
I feel like I should mention. Ah, ah, no, you're watching this December 1st. I'm shooting this on the 31st. Oh wait, no, it's past midnight. Anyway, it was October. It's all bad. It's very bad. That's a dang it. Anyway, getting away from the Kraken Kings game, but staying with the Kings, Sean Dersey with, um, it's a great pass. Kopitar. A near turnover by Dersey. And he gave it away, and Barabanov scores! Alexander Barabanov, opportunistic there, and it's 3-2. Did the Sharks need, they needed this, a goal in the last 40 seconds of the game. Just a horrendous, heinous giveaway. Alexander Barabanov, though, look at how the stick just betrays Dersey on that. Stick flex off the heel, and it's almost a pass and a one-timer in by Barabanov. That's a big goal for the Sharks. That'll give them a lift. To the wrong team! Dude, I know there weren't a lot of options, but all of them were better than that. That was a, that was a really good one. Really good. Uh, fundamentals of a dang it. That's a dang it. For our next dang it, when you see something bad happen to your team, like a penalty, for example, an infraction, you see something bad happening to your team, what's your job as a fan? That's right, you yell at guys who are dressed up like me. You yell at the officials. What is the player's job? Well, the player on the ice, their job is to try to win the hockey game. But whenever a player tries to do the fan's job of yelling and screaming at the refs, sometimes bad things happen, like, well, look. Penn want to complete a change. They rush realizing oh, that. He gets drilled by Jarvis. Penguins pleading for a penalty call. They're not going to get it. It's a two on out for Carolina. Tapped in front for Pesci. He scores. In overtime. On a two on O. Oh, it's Brett Pesci. That's a pretty good push, isn't it, from behind? In a dangerous part of the ice. Going into the wall. And Brett Pesci finishes on the ensuing chance. So Pesci with game winners in back-to-back -back games on the 2 on 0 with Spechnikov. And as frustrating a finish as you could have, Bob, as the Penguins were immediately up in arms looking for a penalty call there. This is a catastrophe from start to finish. I'm not going to blame anyone here. I'm not going to blame the Hurricanes for laying that hit because there was a sudden move. I'm not going to blame the Penguins for being upset that one of their own got hurt. What I am going to blame the Penguins for is stopping playing. Dude, what? Bad enough you do that like halfway through the first period. You can't do that in overtime, man. 2 on 0 goes the other way that Hurricanes end the game. But if you go back and watch closely, honestly, both teams could have maybe been called for too many men on the ice, especially the Hurricanes. Look at this, look at this. Oh, no, 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 the ice is lava. I can't do it. That is a catastrophe from almost finish to finish. That's a dang it. For next dang it, I love laughing out loud. Do you love laughing out loud? Do you, do you like LOLing? Cool, great. Here's Jacob Truba trying to hit Nico Heischer. For shorthanded goals this season. Take away by Heischer. He was bumped, but lost control and... <laughs> okay, so producer Nick said there's no replay of this, and I think that's fine, because we can just show it again. For shorthanded goals this season. Take away by Heischer. He... Okay, okay, that was good. That was e even better the second time. Hey, is there anything stopping us from doing it a third time? No, we can just, we can just do it. Okay, show it again. For shorthanded goals this season. Take away by Heischer. He... Okay, that's enough. That's... Gonna need a fourth one. Ah, that's, it just, it tickles me. It, it, it's perfect. That's a dang it. For our next dang it, show the Jacob Trouba one again. Okay, I'm done. I promise I'm done. Okay, we need to get this back on track. Ah, Scott Wedgwood taking us back to fundamentals. If you're a goaltender, tend the goal! Wedgwood looking for an outlet. Instead, Levo tipped, they score! Saad tips it high, and the Blues have life, it's 2-1. And from their own zone, good bank pass by Letty as he goes off for a change. A little dumping right there, and it looks like the Dallas Stars are in good position, but not to be, because when that puck comes around the boards there, a quick reaction play by Levo to get it to the front, and that is a Crosby-like redirection right there with one hand on his stick by Brandon Saad, up over the shoulder and in the net. I 
hate repeat offenders. I, Scott, you've been in these videos for this very same thing. You knocked that off. That's a dang. Now, if you're a goaltender, tend the goal, but if you're a, a scorer, a prospective scorer, if there's a wide open net, hit the net! Two guys could do with learning that. One of them is Pavel Zaka of the Boston Bruins. Back runs over Nemestikov. Oh, Zaka missed the open goal. Clean hit on Nemestikov. Great hands by Krejci to get it right back to Pasternak. There's your two-on-one, oh. one, one timer. You know that saying you couldn't hit the broad side of a barn? I've never quite understood that because all sides of a barn are bigger than a hockey net, and I think Zaka still might have missed this one. That's a dang it. This next one's maybe even worse from Mark Stone. Forget the miss. Look at the reaction. He in turn drops to Petrangelo, who settles the puck at the left point. Passes down. Marshall Silver. Shot kick. That rebound. The line. What a chance there. And somehow missing the net. Job making the first save. Here's a shot. First save. And there's Mark Stone. And you can see his reaction. Gets underneath it. It was stood up. That one's bad. And he knows it. First dang it might be that he's wearing a glow in the dark jersey. I'm sorry. No. We let Vegas get away with the shiny helmets. This is where I draw the line. But I think my favorite part of this clip is Stone. Like, reacting and throwing his head back, I don't even think the puck was past the net yet. Dave, and there's Mark Stone, and you can see his reaction. Oh, that's a good one, Mark. That was, I needed that. Thank you. That's a dang it. For next dang it, this is a, uh, a very strange one. Lots of dang it's fit into very specific categories. Like, uh, you know, you miss the net, or if you're a goaltender, tend the goal, or strange ref calls. This is just kind of bad hockey. It's some really bad hockey. You want to see some bad hockey? Third one up off the glass, and now it's going to be a two-on-one. Sammy Blay in over the line, looking, centering, jamming, Sam Campbell on coach and still loose, fired, score! Julian Gauthier stayed with it. And buries it under the bar. Sharp angle shot by Malone. This puck caroms off the glass and goes right by the defender. Results in this two on one. I thought Blake could have shot this puck, but he threads it through one whack, two whacks, broken sticks. Look at the bodies. All five Oilers are right around their goaltender trying to armadillo this one. And somehow that kick right there by Carpenter goes right to Gauthier, and he has the wherewithal. The what were the Oilers doing there? I No, no, really. Show it again. Every Edmonton Oiler on the ice is in this shot. What is going on? There's like three penalties, and all like, none of you, you didn't practice this. You didn't. Look at this hugging, this like slow dance. What's going on? Dude, look at this. Like what, did Jay Woodcroft go, all right guys, let's practice that play again where you all run around like you're late for work and forgot your keys. That's just hilarious. That's a dang it. And we end with a couple controversies. First, the end, or rather the end of regulation in the Stars-Jets game. To the left side, Sagan settles it down. Sagan trying to stay with it. Now Haskin in. Stick handles, a backhand save made. Rebound loose, kept alive. And here's Robertson, score! Hellebuck is down, face down. His helmet is off behind the net. But Robertson and the Stars have tied it with 18 and a half seconds to play. Jets are gonna challenge this for goalie interference. Hellebuck was trying to get to the rebound. Jamie trying to get behind the net and track down the puck just basically went right straight through the skull of Connor Hellebach. They didn't blow it dead. The play continued. All right, this is a dang it because I don't know what to do. Something about wearing this uniform makes me not know what to do. Because the Stars score. Why do they score? Well, because Connor Hellebuck was down. Why was Connor Hellebuck down? Because he got hit in the mask. How did he get hit in the mask? by Jamie Benn. How'd Jamie Benn hit him? He was shoved in by a Jets player. So what do you think should have happened? Don't be a nerd and say what the rule is. Not interested. What should have happened? What should the rule be? Because I'm not gonna lie, yeah, this is a dang it, but it's the dang it to have the conversation. I'm not totally sure. Because on one hand, it was a Dallas Stars player who knocked Hellebuck's mask off. That should be a play that's blown dead. But a Jets player knocked the Stars player into Hellebuck. And should that be a blown dead play? Let me ask another question. 
What if Hellebuck gets up and tries to make the save? But let me ask the most important question. What if, after Hellebuck gets up, he gets cracked in the face with a puck? And before anyone goes, oh, well, that used to happen all the time back in the day. Yeah, they shot it at like half the speed with a 50 pound stick. They've kind of been working at the technology. Sticks are carbon fiber, they bend. Now even more complicated, there's precedence for this. It actually happened in the Stanley Cup final when the Lightning scored a goal on a maskless Darcy Kemper. Problem is it's like, mask comes off goal. Pretty sure three different Dallas Stars have possession of this puck in the time between Hellebuck's mask getting knocked off and the goal. The rule is imminent scoring chance and I, it's not that imminent. That's like saying noon is imminent at midnight. I mean, yeah, but what are you gonna do for the next 12 hours? This is a dang it that I leave to you because forget what the rule is, I'm not sure what it should be on this one. Let me know in the comment box down below. Last but not least, oh, oh, the refs come out to play. Another game involving Dallas and another team that I just mentioned, the Colorado Avalanche. You won't recognize them because they're wearing the reverse retros. What you're gonna see is an obvious penalty and the play get blown dead. By Johnston, Habs can't get it out. Good puck movement, Dallas. Quick opportunity, set in front. It went off of EJ, he was sliding, loose puck. Four far side and the Stars will pick it up there and a penalty coming up on Dallas. Manson is down on the ice holding his face. No blood. Or is there a penalty? I'm trying to figure that out too right now. I think he may have thought Georgiev had the puck and he blew the whistle but they're having a conference right now the officials. Let's take a look at some saves. Your best penalty killer folks. You always know it's your goaltender. Look at that push across. He's so good at that. Both him and Francois. Here's another flurry. Sagan just trying to slide it. Bodies are everywhere. There's Manson on the ground right there. He gets a stick in the face. Watch here and boom. Well, that's a high sticking penalty, but the officials haven't sent any stars to the box yet. Except, well, no, that's not what happened. Play got blown dead, not to call a penalty, but because they thought Josh Manson was injured. But he got up and was okay and there wasn't any blood, so don't worry about it. He's fine. We didn't need to blow the play dead. To which all the fans say, yeah, but you're gonna call a penalty, right? Here is the ref's explanation. The play was killed due to an injury. There's no injury, no penalty. Oh boy. Y you know what? I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I'm gonna allow this fan behind Jared Bednar to say it. Is is anyone good at reading lips? I'm not, I think he said, oh, something about fun. He talked about fun. Bro, what? So they saw Manson get hurt. They blew the play dead because they thought he might be hurt. They didn't ask too many questions about how he got hurt. And you can't review it? it listen, if he was bleeding, they could review it because then they could review whether or not it should be a double minor for high sticking or not. But he's not bleeding, so they can't review it, even though all of us at home saw it, and everyone in the building saw it, and anyone on the bench with a tablet saw it, Josh Manson got high stick by Mason Marchman. Now watching the replay, some people are like, oh, maybe Marchman lifted Manson's stick into Manson's face, and that, no, not from my eye, you can't see for 100% from the angle that we're at, but it, no, that's not what happened, I don't think. So you can't review for a high stick, so they're just not gonna get it right. Do you know how many minutes and hours of our lives have been wasted on reviews because we are hell-bent on getting the call right? But in this situation, you are purposefully making the decision to get the call wrong by not reviewing it. There's no review needed. We all saw it. Listen, I know what the rule is. I know what the rule is and officials just call the rule book. But dude, when thousands of people in attendance and thousands of people watching at home know what happened and you probably do too and you're just ignoring it, then what are any of us doing here? There should be some sort of rule called K, but I saw it anyway. Yes, I know I wasn't supposed to review it, but I saw it anyway. We blew the whistle even though I shouldn't have blown the whistle and I thought we'd investigate. Dude, you thought he was hurt, which means you were probably gonna review to see what happened because if he was hurt and they said it was a high stick, and then there's maybe a double minor. Look, I understand too many reviews are gonna slow the game down. That would take 20 seconds. Really, it should take 10 seconds, but I suppose you gotta watch it twice. What are we doing here? What are any of us doing here? 
That is the most confusing. I've never seen that explanation before in my entire life. C could we go back to the gentleman behind the bench? I just hope both teams have fun, I think is what he said. Well, that's a good attitude. Good for him. Anyway, wow. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends that you saw this video, except you weren't injured, so you, di you didn't.